Kumaraswamy Kamaraj the 15th of July 1903 to the 2nd of October 1975 was a leader of the Indian National Congress Inc widely acknowledged as the kingmaker in Indian politics during the 1960s he served as Inc president for two terms i.e. 4 years between 1964 to 1967 and was responsible for the elevation of Lal Bahadur Shastri to the position of Prime Minister of India after Nehru's death and Indira Gandhi after Shastri's death Kamaraj was the third chief minister of Madras State Tamil Nadu during 1954–1963 and a member of parliament, Lok Sabha during 1952–1954 and 1969–1975. He was known for his simplicity and integrity. He played a major role in developing the infrastructure of the Madras State and worked to improve the quality of life of the needy and the disadvantaged. He was involved in the Indian independence movement. As the president of the INC, he was instrumental in navigating the party after the death of Jawaharlal Nehru. As the chief minister of Madras, he was responsible for bringing free education to the disadvantaged and introduced the free midday meal scheme while he himself did not complete schooling. He was awarded with India's highest civilian honour, the Bharat Ratna, posthumously in 1976. Early life Kamaraj was born on 15 July 1903 to Kumarasamy Nadar and Sivagami Amal at Varudunagar in Tamil Nadu. His name was originally Kamachi, later changed to Kamarahar. His father Kumarasamy was a merchant. In 1907, four years after the birth of Kamaraj, his sister Nagamal was born. Kamaraj went to a traditional school when he was five years old 1907, and in 1908 he was admitted to Yenadi Narayana Vidya Salai. In 1909 Kamaraj was admitted in Virudapati High School. Kamaraj's father died when he was six years old, his mother was forced to support the family. In 1914 Kamaraj dropped out of school to support his mother. Politics. As a young boy Kamaraj worked in his uncle's provision shop, during this time he began to attend public meetings and processions about the Indian Home Rule movement. Kamaraj developed an interest in prevailing political conditions by reading newspapers daily. The Jallianwala Bagh massacre was the decisive turning point in his life, he decided to fight for national freedom and to bring an end to foreign rule. In 1920, when he was 18, he became active in politics. He joined Congress as a full-time political worker. In 1921 Kamaraj organized public meetings at Virudunagar for Congress leaders. He was eager to meet Gandhi, and when Gandhi visited Madurai on 21 September 1921 Kamaraj attended the public meeting and met Gandhi for the first time. He visited villages carrying Congress propaganda. In 1922 Congress boycotted the visit of the Prince of Wales as part of the non-cooperation movement. He came to Madras and took part in the event. In 1923-25 Kamaraj participated in the Nagpur flag satyagraha. In 1927, Kamaraj started the sword satyagraha in Madras and was chosen to lead the Neil statue satyagraha, but this was given up later in view of the Simon Commission boycott. Kamaraj went to jail for two years in June 1930 for participating in the Salt Satyagraha. Led by Rajagopalachari at Veteranyam, he was released before he served the two-year sentence as a result of 1931 Gandhi Irwin Pact. In 1932, Section 144 was imposed in Madras prohibiting the holding of meetings and organization of processions against the arrest of Gandhi in Bombay. In Verdunagar, under Kamaraj's leadership, processions and demonstrations happened every day. Kamaraj was arrested again in January 1932 and sentenced to one year's imprisonment. In 1933 Kamaraj was falsely charged in the Virudunagar bomb case. Viradarahulu Naidu and George Joseph argued on Kamaraj's behalf and proved the charges to be baseless. At the age of 34, Kamaraj entered the assembly winning the Sator seat in the 1937 election. Kamaraj conducted a vigorous campaign throughout the state asked people not to contribute to war funds when Sir Arthur Hope, the Madras governor, was collecting contributions to fund for the Second World War. 
In December 1940 he was arrested again at Gunter, under the defense of India rules for speeches that opposed contributions to the war fund, and sent to Velour Central Prison while he was on his way to Warda to get Gandhi's approval for a list of satyagrahis. While in jail, he was elected as municipal councillor of Virudunagar. He was released nine months later in November 1941 and resigned from this post as he thought he had greater responsibility for the nation. His principle was, one should not accept any post to which one could not do full justice. In 1942, Kamaraj attended the All India Congress Committee in Bombay and returned to spread propaganda material for the Quit India movement. The police issued orders to all the leaders who attended this Bombay session. Kamaraj did not want to be arrested before he took the message to all district and local leaders. He decided not to go to Madras and decided to shorten his trip. He saw a large number of policemen waiting to arrest Congress leaders in Arakanam but managed to escape from the police and went to Ranipet, Tanjore, Trichy and Madurai to inform local leaders about the Quit India movement. He reached Verdunagar after finishing his work and sent a message to the local police that he was ready to be arrested. He was arrested in August 1942. He was under detention for three years and was released in June 1945. This was his last prison term. Kamaraj was imprisoned six times by the British for his pro-independence activities, that added up to more than 3,000 days in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Minister On 13 April 1954, Kamaraj became the chief minister of Madras province. To everyone's surprise, Kamaraj nominated C. Sebramaniam and M. Bhaktivatsalam, who had contested his leadership, to the newly formed cabinet. As chief minister, Kamaraj removed the family vocation-based hereditary education policy introduced by Rajaji. The state made immense strides in education and trade. New schools were opened, so that poor rural students had to walk no more than three kilometers to their nearest school. Better facilities were added to existing ones. No village remained without a primary school and no panchayat without a high school. Kamaraj strove to eradicate illiteracy by introducing free and compulsory education up to the 11th standard. He introduced the midday meal scheme to provide at least one meal per day to the locks of poor school children. Later it was expanded to four more schools. This was the precursor to the free noon meal schemes introduced by K. Kamaraj in 1960s and expanded by M. G. Ramachandran in the 1980s. He introduced free school uniforms to weed out caste, creed and class distinctions among young minds. During the British regime the education rate was only 7%. But after Kamaraj's reforms it reached 37%. Apart from increasing the number of schools, steps were taken to improve standards of education. To improve standards, the number of working days was increased from 180 to 200, unnecessary holidays were reduced, and syllabi were prepared to give opportunity to various abilities. Kamaraj and Bishnuram Medhi governor took efforts to establish IIT Madras in 1959. Major irrigation schemes were planned in Kamaraj's period. Dams and irrigation canals were built across Higher Bhavani, Mani Muthur, Arani, Vagai, Amaravathi, Sithanur, Krishnagiri, Pulambadi, Parambakulam, and Neyaru, among others. The Lower Bhavani Dam in Iroda district brought 207,000 acres 840 square kilometers of land under cultivation. 45,000 acres 180 square kilometers of land benefited from canals constructed from the Metar Dam. The Vagai and Sithanur systems facilitated cultivation across thousands of acres of lands in Madurai and North Arcot districts respectively. 30 crore rupees were planned to be spent for Parambakulam River scheme, and 150 lakhs of acres of lands were brought under cultivation. One third of this i.e. 56 lakhs of acres of land received a permanent irrigation facility. In 1957-61 1,628 tanks were desilted under the small irrigation scheme, and 2,000 wells were dug with outlets. Long-term loans with 25% subsidy were given to farmers. In addition farmers who had dry lands were given oil engines and electric pump sets on an installment basis. Industries with huge investments in crores of rupees were started in his period, Naveli Lignite Corporation, BHEL at Trichy, Manali Refinery, Hindustan Ra Photo Film Factory at Oti, Surgical Instruments Factory at Chennai, and a railway coach factory at Chennai were established. 
Industries such as paper, sugar, chemicals and cement took off during the period. First cabinet Kamaraj's Council of Ministers during his first tenure as Chief Minister, the 13th of April 1954 to the 31st of March 1957. Changed following the State's Reorganization Act of 1956, A. B. Shetty quit the ministry on the 1st of March 1956, and his portfolio was shared between the other ministers. Topic: <laughs> Second Cabinet. Kamaraj's Council of Ministers during Kamarajar's second tenure as Chief Minister, the 1st of April 1957 to the 1st of March 1962. Topic: <laughs> Third Cabinet. Kamaraj's Council of Ministers during his third tenure as Chief Minister, the 3rd of March 1962 to the 2nd of October 1963. Kamaraj plan Kamaraj remained chief minister for three consecutive terms, winning elections in 1957 and 1962. Kamaraj noticed that the Congress party was slowly losing its vigor. On Gandhi Jandi Day, 2 October 1963, he resigned from the Tamil Nadu chief minister post. He proposed that all senior Congress leaders should resign from their posts and devote all their energy to the revitalization of the Congress. In 1963 he suggested to Nehru that senior Congress leaders should leave ministerial posts to take up organizational work. This suggestion came to be known as the Kamaraj Plan, which was designed primarily to dispel from the minds of congressmen the lure of power, creating in its place a dedicated attachment to the objectives and policies of the organization. Six union ministers and six chief ministers including Lal Bahadur Shastri, Jagjivan Ram, Murarji Desai, Biju Patnaik and S. K. Patil followed suit and resigned from their posts. Impressed by Kamaraj's achievements and acumen, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru felt that his services were needed more at the national level. In a swift move he brought Kamaraj to Delhi as the president of the Indian National Congress. Nehru realized that in addition to wide learning and vision, Kamaraj possessed enormous common sense and pragmatism. Kamaraj was elected president, Indian National Congress, on 9 October 1963. <laughs> <laughs> National politics After Nehru's death in 1964, Kamaraj successfully navigated the party through turbulent times. As president of the INC, he refused to become the next prime minister himself and was instrumental in bringing to power two prime ministers, Lal Bahadur Shastri in 1964 and Nehru's daughter Indira Gandhi in 1966. For this role, he was widely acclaimed as the kingmaker. During the 1960s, when the Congress split in 1969, Kamaraj became the leader of the Indian National Congress organization Inc. O in Tamil Nadu. The party failed poorly in the 1971 elections amid allegations of fraud by the opposition parties. He remained as the leader of Inc. O until his death in 1975. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Electoral history. Personal life After being the chief minister of the state, when the municipality of Varudunagar provided a direct water connection to his house in the town, Kamarajar ordered it to be immediately disconnected as he did not want any special privileges. He refused to use the Z-level security that was provided to him as the CM of Tamil Nadu and travelled always with only one police patrol vehicle. He did not marry, did not own any property and was never tempted by power. When he died, he left behind 130 rupees, two pairs of sandals, four shirts, four dhotis and a few books. <laughs> Death Kamaraj died at his home, on Gandhi Jandi Day, 2 October 1975, which also the 12th anniversary of his resignation. 
He was aged 72 and died in his sleep. Topic: <laughs> Legacy. Kamaraj was awarded India's highest civilian honor, the Bharat Ratna, posthumously in 1976. He is widely acknowledged as Kalvi Thanthai, father of education in Tamil Nadu. The domestic terminal of the Chennai airport is named Kamaraj Terminal. Chennai's beach road is named Kamarahar Salai. Bangalore's North Parade Road and Parliament Road in New Delhi is K. Kamaraj Road and the Madurai Kamaraj University in his honour. In 2003, the Government of India released a commemorative coin on his birthday. <laughs> Popular culture In 2004 a Tamil language film titled Kamaraj was made based on the life history of Kamaraj. The English version of the film was released on DVD in 2007.